from Omaha, Nebraska, on the banks of the Missouri River. We are inside DJ Sokol Arena for Big East women's basketball between the Seton Hall Pirates and the Creighton Blue Jays on a Sunday afternoon. Just a few weeks away from the Big East Conference Tournament, here's how the current bracket breaks down if it were to start today. You see Creighton on the bubble there in sixth place in terms of gaining a first round by. You don't want to have to play that first night on March 6th. Jays need to win some games down the stretch if they're going to assure themselves of that. Seton Hall in fourth, but they're not safe yet in terms of gaining that first round by as well. That makes this a massive game here this afternoon. And with John Schreiner, I'm Donnie Barnes, and if you like matchups between big time players, we sure have that today, John, as Shadeen Samuels has been outstanding for Seton Hall after some early season injury troubles. She's been so good lately. Yeah, shadeen has been dealing with knee trouble all season long. It's really limited her in spots, but since January 19th, she's scored over 23 times. Those are her only 20 point performances. She's feeling better and scoring at a higher clip here down the stretch. Meanwhile, at the start of the year, we said that Jalen Agnew would have to have a massive season for Creighton if the Jays were going to be successful, and she sure has, averaging over 19 points a game. Yeah, and she's delivered, especially in that Providence game uh, just a couple of games ago when she had 38 points, career high, hit seven three-pointers. If she scores like that, Creighton is tough to beat. Just a handful of games left until postseason time. Every game so critical this time of year. We'll have this one for you with our opening tip coming up next on BEDN. The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. I felt like I was gonna spend my whole adult life paying this off. Thanks to SoFi, I can see the light at the end of the tunnel. As of 12 p.m. today, I am debt free. We have no debt, we don't owe anybody anything, and it's fantastic. Sokol getting set for Creighton and Seton Hall. Pretty good crowd filing inside here today, and you can feel the intensity in the air. Mid-February basketball, it is that time, the best time of the season for college basketball. We look at the starting lineups for these two sides, and first for the Seton Hall Pirates, we highlighted Shadeen Samuels in our open, John, but Alexis Lewis, a transfer from Iona, has made a huge difference for them this season as well. Yeah, Alexis averaging over 12 and a half points per game and more than five and a half rebounds per game. But the last two, her scoring has dropped off. She scored six and seven points in her last two contests. Seton Hall need her to pick up the scoring load if they're going to come in and knock Creighton off on their home court. For Creighton, it's not so much who's in the lineup today, it's who's out. Olivia Elger, we just learned prior to the game, scratched, and she's going to be a big miss for the Jays. Yeah, in, in this case, it's not who's here, it's who's not here for Creighton as Olivia Elger has to sit out uh, due to some knee, ankle, lower leg trouble. We're not sure exactly what it is, but she is not dressed today, won't be available. And that means some other players are going to have to pick up the slack. So the Jays, after a tough loss here on Friday night to St. John's, 77-70 the final. They uh, played fairly well, but not quite as well as they would have hoped defensively in that game. Their defense has been so strong this season. Uh, maybe getting a little more ragged their last couple times out as they've gotten healthier. We look at our two uh, head coaches today. Lots of personality on show. Anthony Bozella, we got a chance to talk to him before the game. Full of enthusiasm. He's built this program kind of from the ground up over the last seven years. Yeah, and that's what he's done. I mean, he's Southampton, LIU, Brooklyn, Iona, all programs that struggled. You know, single-digit wins his first season on campus, but he turns them all around, and that's what he's done with Seton Hall. Just a tremendous coaching job from Bozella throughout his entire career. We are ready for our opening tip. Creighton in the white, Seton Hall in the blue, and it's the Pirates who control and have the game's first possession. Go on the attack right away with Barbara Johnson, but partial block perhaps by Gracie Griglione defended well. You see, Creighton, this is a bigger lineup from them than we're used to seeing. 
two true forwards in the game with Griglione in there on the starting lineup. And then Agnew commits a charge. Looked like she got a little off balanced and picks up a foul 26 seconds in. An aggressive take here for Agnew. It looked like she just might have misstepped on her way in. And that caused her to lose her balance and fall forward. Seton Hall love to play fast. They want to get into their offense right away. It's a new system they put in place last year. Got better as last season went on. It's been much more fluid this season. Creighton forcing them to milk the shot clock here. It's down to four. And in the paint, Desiree Elmore beat the buzzer, couldn't bank it in, but gets her own rebound. And then the quick three, Barbara Johnson off the mark. And out of bounds to the Pirates. And they get a couple of second chances. Here's something to watch for is Anthony Bazella told us before this game that if his team is shooting 20, 25, 33 pointers today, they're not going to win. And there's an early three pointer by Johnson that was off the mark. And an offensive foul, so it goes back to Creighton. Seton Hall want to play through the post against Creighton. They need to get the ball inside, score from the block. And if they're not doing that, if, if Jim Flannery's bunch is, is able to stop them from doing that, it's going to bode well. Flannery in his 18th season, all-time wins leader for the women's basketball program. He's a staple on the sidelines here in Omaha. Yeah, and he's had to really improvise this year, especially early this season. The Jays had so many injuries. Won a lot of games with grit and defense. They've gotten healthier as the year has gone on. But again, missing Olivia Elger today, just when they were almost fully healthy, it seemed. And there's the cut for Temi Sarda, and she drops it home off the front of that lift. That's an underrated part of Agnew's game. She averages over three assists a game as well. She's a good passer. Here's Shadeen Samuels. Tough post pass. Now Samuels. Lauren Park Lane. Samuels again. Lob it in that paint. Alexis Lewis misses short. Good defensive start for Creighton. Yeah, and they're not allowing a lot of second chances. And even when they have, they've been outside shots, as that last one was for Seton Hall. Sarda off target on the three. Back in the post to Samuels, then Park Lane. Lost it. Out of bounds. Trying to return that ball to Shadeen Samuels. And Fly out of her hand. And yeah, Seton Hall just doesn't look quite settled right now. And I know they like to play fast and they want to get things going quickly. But to do that, you've got to be sound. You've got to know where you're going with the basketball before you make the pass. It can't just be on the fly. But a good strip there from Lewis. Seton Hall averaging 20 or more turnovers a game and 11 of their last 15 will keep the ball here. That's something the Pirates have thrived on, creating those turnovers, creating transition opportunities. And creating 19 turnovers a game for their opponents on the season. Creighton, meanwhile, only averaging about 11 turnovers a game. They've taken care of the ball very well. Now Jim Flannery traditionally has his group as one of the lowest turnover per game teams in the country year in and year out. Lauren Park Lane. Now Elmore, the step back, in and out. But Samuels the rebound. And then the three from Maya Jackson, and the Pirates are on the board. Yeah, Jackson, another one of the super freshmen to go along with Park Lane on this roster. Jackson averages 10 points, and she comes off the bench almost every game. Agnew hasn't been involved much early on. This is. And she remains scoreless. First field goal attempt she's taken so far. Elmore, tough finish. She has five straight. <laughs> Seton Hall with a 5 0 run. Take a three point lead. Agnew had a tough time getting going in their first meeting against Seton Hall. And then the three ball missed by Carly Batchelor. Well, Agnew can usually get onto a bigger player trying to guard her because she is 6'1. 
and they can't stay with her quickness. But Samuels, as you see, she's every bit as quick as Jalen Agnew. Well, another offensive board for Seton Hall, but then a tie-up forced, and Creighton has the arrow, so they'll have the ball. But boy, uh, Jim Flannery off camera, not happy with his team's rebounding there. No, and, and this is one of the things that Seton Hall needs to do today is, is really get on the glass and get some offensive boards. They have the athletic advantage underneath. They have a little bit of a size advantage overall. So they're going to have to be good on the glass today. They have been so far. It hasn't translated into a big lead just yet. A loose ball. Jay's fortunate to get it back. Leads to an open three for Tatum Rembound. Rembound, just another one of those shooters for Creighton, 40% from beyond the arc. Seems like Jim Flannery's got him every single year at three of the five spots. He can hit threes. A post pass intercepted by Rachel Saunders. Creighton looking for the lead back. Pull up three. Agnew way off the mark. Good attempt by Sarda to save it, but stepped on the baseline. 5-5 five, five with five to go in the first. And I mentioned that Seton Hall didn't look settled in early. Well, Jalen Agnew certainly doesn't. She's That's an airballed three from a player who averages nearly 20 a game. You mark that one on your bingo card. You're not going to probably see it again today. Maya Jackson, good finish. Seton Hall in the lead. Good looking youngster, Maya Jackson. Got a bright future for the Pirates. Well, she scored over 2,000 points in high school. Averaged 25 a game as a senior. There's a foul on Maya Jackson. It will take us to our first media timeout of the afternoon. Seton Hall with the early two-point lead. Just over halfway through our opening quarter in Omaha today. What can great minds do? While at Seton Hall, I interned with the Superior Court of New Jersey, and that inspired me to go to law school. I am a physics and civil engineering major, and I want to work on infrastructure in underdeveloped countries. I'm the news director at one of the top college radio stations in the country. I'm working with my professor on research that could help athletes during sudden cardiac events. I started my own business, Classic Soccer Cleats, and I just sold it to a company in England. Come see for yourself what great minds can do. All right, we got to be all in, all in, all right? We got to make sure we play with great passion. You have felt each other and helped each other and allowed yourselves to be helped with that, all right? We've got a great opportunity to do that today. This is who we are. When you look to your left and you see your sister over there, you help. Because what we are, we are one. Let's break it. One, two, three. Yeah. That's the Big East way. The 2020 Big East Women's Basketball Tournament at Trust Arena. Get tickets now. The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. I felt like I was going to spend my whole adult life paying this off. Thanks to SoFi, I can see the light at the end of the tunnel. As of 12 p.m. today, I am debt free. We have no debt, we don't owe anybody anything, and it's fantastic. Big East Conference standings entering this afternoon's games. And you see Creighton in that sixth spot, tied with Villanova, trying to 
game that opening round by. You have to finish in the top six. Otherwise, you're playing on that first night. You'd have to win four games in four days to win that conference tournament. Not a situation you want to put yourself in. Now the bottom three are locked in. Georgetown, Providence, Xavier. They're going to finish 8, 9, 10 in some order. And then it's really Creighton, Villanova, St. John's who are kind of battling to stay out of the seven spot. Again, that's what makes today's game so important for both these teams. Because as you saw there, Seton Hall just a game and a half ahead of Creighton. They're in fourth place. Nice pull up to tie the game by Timmy Sarda. Well, Seton Hall not out of the woods. I mean, if it all goes wrong down the stretch, they could find themselves in the seventh spot. Here's another offensive rebound for the Pirates. Barbara Johnson didn't get it to go, but she'll shoot free throws. And that is already the fourth offensive board in this opening quarter for Seton Hall. That's something. They're crashing the glass hard on the offensive end and getting done what Bazella wanted to get done. He told us ahead of this one that they had the offensive rebound. They were going to have to get second chances. He's got to be happy with the way his team's done it so far halfway through this first quarter. Both free throws good for Barbara Johnson. Set out last season after transferring from Ole Miss. Jalen Agnew hasn't scored yet for Creighton. Rimbaud, good movement under the basket. And there's Agnew's first points off the nice feed from Michael Parham, who just checked in a moment ago. As you got switched on to Maya Jackson. It was only 5-7. That's an offensive foul. And Creighton will have the basketball as Elmore called for that charge. That's nice a, job by Rachel Saunders to draw. Pretty clear charge, and that's what Rachel Saunders is in there to do. She's a hard-nosed player. She will give you a scoring, not on a nightly basis, but now and then, but great defensive player, Rachel Saunders. Rempel for Creighton. They look to snap a 9-9 tie. Samuels almost created a turnover. Parham trying to hit Jag Agnew, cutting to the rim again. This time it was tipped off of her, and Seton Hall ball. Samuels is doing a great job defensively on Jalen Agnew right now, not giving her space for anything. They're trying to get that little curl cut to the basket going, and Samuels, among others, there to deny it. And you see how much Jim Flannery trusts Rachel Saunders. He's the one guarding Samuels on that play. Well, but the feed to Barbara Johnson was an excellent one. And Seton Hall back in the lead. Agnew takes the spot up three. Bachelor the offensive board and the put down. And Creighton doing some work on the offensive boards. It's a good put back by the youngster Carly Bachelor. That was their first O rebound of the day. Ties it at 11. Samuels, she takes the tray. Too strong, but tapped right back to her. Fifth offensive board for Seton Hall already. Make it six. But then out of the hands of Elmore, and she pokes it to Rembo. And the jump pass for Batchelor can't get the spin. Seton Hall pushed the other way. Johnson forced to pull up by Sarda. Crowd wanted three seconds and then thrown off the top of the backboard. Crazy sequence, not the prettiest basketball. Both teams held firm. And Seton Hall on their last possession settling for two jumpers from beyond the arc. They've done good work on the inside and they're getting offensive rebounds when they can establish the position down low. I don't think their head coach, Anthony Bazell, is going to be too happy with settling for outside jumpers twice in the same possession. Timmy Sardis had a nice start to this game for Creighton with four points. Lily Batchelor very involved the last couple of possessions. Finds Agnew. Who scores? Plus one. What a tough shot from Jalen Agnew. She gets pushed in the back. She's falling underneath the basket. Somehow gets it to go. That is a tough, tough shot. 
Foul against Alexis Lewis. Agnew has her fifth point. And she doesn't miss from there. Nope, she leads the nation in free throw percentage, 93% coming in. Nobody in NCAA women's basketball shooting better from the line than she is. Biggest lead so far for Creighton. Seton Hall looking to erase it. Samuels, and then the long two is too strong. Here is another offensive rebound. Again, it's an outside jumper when they've gotten the ball into the post at times. Lewis kicks out. Jackson takes the three, and we're tied at 14. Well, you'll take it when you make it. But the percentage right now for Seton Hall, not good. Jackson's made two of three, and everybody else is 0 for three. And then a turnover. Seton Hall could grab the lead. Jackson swatted but fouled by Saunders. Crowd disagrees. Looked like a good block from the top end. It might have been the lower half with Saunders. Got her with the hip. Take a look. Ooh, looks pretty clean. I think they called that on Carly Batchelor. Yeah. Bachelor with the body is the only call that I can see right there. Yeah, that is the call. It's Bachelor's first. Seton Hall out of fouls in the first quarter. You see that was Creighton's third. As that rolls off for Jackson. 62% from the line in her freshman campaign, Maya Jackson. That's eight points already today. Make it nine. Seton Hall with a little 4-0 burst to regain the lead. Agnew on Samuels. This is the matchup. Timmy started dribbling some clock down. You see a seven-second differential between game and shot. Agnew. Not much of a screen. Peyton Brodsky loses it. And Lewis almost lost it again. Five seconds. Jackson. Lewis had it poked free. Takes the heave. And it sticks in the elbow, and that's how the first quarter ends. Kind of a fitting end of the first quarter. Not the prettiest <laughs> basketball, but neither of these teams care. This time of year, it's all about getting the results. And through one, it's a one-point Seton Hall lead. Back with quarter number two from Omaha after this on BEBN. each other and allow yourselves to be helped with that. All right? We've got a great opportunity to do that today. This is who we are. When you look to your left and you see your sister over there, you help her. Because what we are, we are one. Let's pray. One, two, three. Yeah. That's the Big East way. The 2020 Big East Women's Basketball Tournament at Trust Arena. Get tickets now. Every time you show up, every time you make your loyalties clear, whether you're here for the memories that last a lifetime or the dance that happens just once a year. Whether you ride for the Cinderella or go all in for the legendary comeback. However you choose to be a fan, you make the game. And they make history. March 20th and 22nd in Omaha, Nebraska. Nothing beats the crowd. Visit NCAA.com slash MBB tickets to get your seats today. What can great minds do? While at Seton Hall, I interned with the Superior Court of New Jersey, and that inspired me to go to law school. 
I am a physics and civil engineering major, and I want to work on infrastructure in underdeveloped countries. I'm the news director at one of the top college radio stations in the country. I'm working with my professor on research that could help athletes during sudden cardiac events. I started my own business, Classic Soccer Cleats, and I just sold it to a company in England. Come see for yourself what great minds can do. points in a game you should be Big East Player of the Week. That's the case for Jalen Agnew at 38 at Providence. Maddie Segrist, congratulations to her as well. Big East Freshman of the Week. Average 21 a game for Villanova. Started Ten the second quarter here in Omaha. One point lead for Seton Hall. Tenth time this season for Segrist being the Freshman of the Week. That's amazing. And here's an open three in and out from Jasmine Smith, the Juco transfer from Texas. Seton Hall scored the last four points of that opening quarter after Creighton had briefly taken a three-point lead. And they have the lead back. That corner three from Peyton Brodsky, who's not shot well from three, just 28% coming in, but she nailed that one. Yeah, she was a much better three-point shooter last year as a freshman than this year, but that's a good look for Brodsky. Elmore fails to tie it. Creighton with the ball up two. There's the cut to Agnew, and she was open. Just a little too much on the pass from Bronski. Yeah, Seton Hall refusing to switch on the screens, especially with Samuels guarding Agnew. So what Creighton's going to try to do now is run a lot of action at Samuels and get her off the spot, run Agnew into the lane like they just did there. Had it set up perfectly. Couldn't quite execute it on the finish. Warren Park Lane at the point for Seton Hall currently. And then the three for Shadeen Samuels. That is the eighth offensive rebound for Seton Hall already. Exasperating for Jim Flannery. And then Samuels to the hoop. Couldn't roll it in, but she'll shoot two. All good scorers have the ability to get to the free throw line. And free throw is number 97 and 98 on the season for Samuels. Not a huge number, but it's enough. She shot 73% from the line. She sinks the first. That foul was on Peyton Brodsky, by the way, her first of the game. Jim Flannery has to be a little exasperated with his team's inability to rebound early in this one. A lot of them have been those long rebounds, as you said, that they just haven't been able to sprint down. And it was especially in that first quarter when Creighton started with the bigger lineup with both Greg Leone and Bachelor in the game. Warren Park Lane got called for the hold there, and she was insistent that she was the one being held. Maya Jackson, who had nine points in the first quarter. High game. Tatum Rimbau. Brodsky. Sarda. Back to Brodsky. Takes another three. Not that time. Rebound tipped to Park Lane, who runs the floor. Samuels had to gather that ball. And plows in and commits the foul as she ran over Brodsky. Now this time Brodsky got the feet set before the arrival of Shadeen Samuels. Gets this one to go the other way. Feet were set. Samuels with the body. First on Samuels. 17 each. Sarda, Agnew drives, 
Tough hanger, and she gets it to go. <laughs> Jalen Agnew had a spot up three wide open in the first quarter, and she missed everything. <laughs> she hangs in the lane on a fadeaway jumper and drills it. She has seven. And a foul called inside on Creighton. Have to get Brodsky again. <laughs> no, this one's on Agnew. Here's the shot from Jalen Agnew. That's a tough shot. I mean, her body is not square to the basket at all. And as you mentioned, that was Agnew's foul. That's her second, and she stays in the game with those two fouls early in the second quarter. Something to keep an eye on as Alexis Lewis ties the game. Heck of a turnaround jumper from Lewis. She was a three-team All-MAAC selection at Iona before transferring here to Seton Hall this season. Sarda from left of the lane, high off the glass and good. Yeah, that's not, that shot's so tough to stop when, again, not square to the basket, just kind of throws it up high off the glass. You're not going to get a hand on that. Lewis turns around. This is Strong. Batchelor pulls it in for Creighton. Alexia Alesh in there at the post for Seton Hall now. Agnew, long three. Halfway down. Wouldn't go the rest of the way. Yeah, she thought it was all the way down when it left her hand. It looked good. Agnew with a little hop step. It didn't quite fall. Had five ties and three lead changes in the first quarter. More so far in the second. Park Lane passes up the three. Instead, Maya Jackson knocks it down. And Seton Hall back in the lead. Third three for Maya Jackson. She's the only Pirate who's been able to hit one from outside so far. She's three of four, the rest of the team is 0 for six. And that's 12 points for Maya Jackson. Sarda can't answer. Jackson the one who sprints down that long board. In between Jackson and Park Lane. Those two guards are so quick. They just fly around back there. And Park Lane oh, was able to beat Carly Batchelor off the dribble, but then couldn't finish at the rim. She is laser quick when she takes off Park Lane. Sticking right to Temi Sarda here and pokes it free and then is fouled. You mentioned the quickness. Her agility there to stay right with Sarda and knock the ball free. Really impressive. Just the feet, they never stop moving. She's always on the go. Samuels takes a seat for Seton Hall. Pirates have Desiree Elmore back in the game. Desiree, that is. Preseason All Big East. Catches in the paint here. Lauren Park Lane. Down the middle. Blocked, but fouled. A late call there. Jim Flannery not happy. It'll take us to the under five timeout. Seton Hall up one, 4.51 to go until half at Sokol Arena. What can great minds do? While at Seton Hall, I interned with the Superior Court of New Jersey, and that inspired me to go to law school. I am a physics and civil engineering major, and I want to work on infrastructure in underdeveloped countries. I'm the news director at one of the top college radio stations in the country. I'm working with my professor on research that could help athletes during sudden cardiac events. I started my own business, Classic Soccer Cleats, and I just sold it to a company in England. Come see for yourself what great minds can do. All right, we gotta be all in, all in, all right? But we gotta make sure we play with great passion. You have felt each other and helped each other and allowed yourselves to be helped with that, all right? We've got a great opportunity to do that today. This is who we are. When you look to your left and you see your sister over there, you help. Because what we are, we are one. Let's break it. One, two, three. Yeah!
That's the Big East way. The 2020 Big East Women's Basketball Tournament at Wintrust Arena. Get tickets now. The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. I felt like I was going to spend my whole adult life paying this off. Thanks to SoFi, I can see the light at the end of the tunnel. As of 12 p.m. today, I am debt free. We have no debt, we don't owe anybody anything, and it's fantastic. What can increase history between these two schools? Creighton leads all time nine to five, and they've won six of the last seven, but they didn't win the last one. Seton Hall, an 82 to 70 win over Creighton last month at Walsh Gymnasium. The Pirates opened that game on a 19 to two run and never really looked back. So it's been a better start for Creighton here today, but Seton Hall with a one point lead. Halfway through the second quarter, and now it's two as Warren Park Lane nails the first of two free throws. Freshman point guard started all 26 games now in the season. You think you have to take some good with bad when you start a freshman point guard, but Parkland's only turned it over about two times a game. Really solid in her first year on campus. A little full court press here by Seton Hall. The Jays able to break it. And in the corner three, ties it up from Tatum Rembaugh. Got a little bit of a friendly bounce off the back side of the rim there from that shot, but ultimately a good one from Rimbao. Her second triple of the game. Her scoring has really picked up over the second half of the season, Tatum Rimbao. Jackson, mm, tough ball for Lewis to handle. He's able to swat it to Park Lane. And now Elmore. Mm -hmm. Around and out as the shot clock was about to expire. Four to go in the half, tied at 24. There's Rembaugh probing. Saunders. The defense by six. Seton Hall to prevent any kind of penetration so far in this possession for Creighton. Shot clock to six. Sarda. Jackson with that board. Seton Hall continue to rebound well. Creighton really trying to force Seton Hall to play defense for the entire shot clock. Just waiting for the Pirates to make a late mistake or finally give up something. Seton Hall's done a pretty good job so far of staying with Creighton through all the action they run on the offensive end. Elmore, short. Box out by Saunders. And wide open, Jalen Agnew. You don't want to give her that kind of room. Uh, and Anthony Bazell definitely didn't want to. That was one of his points of emphasis, was not to give Agnew open looks. A little breakdown on the defensive end right there, and Agnew buried it. Creighton with six straight points to take a three-point lead, matching their largest of the half. Elmore spinning one way and another and finally called for too many steps. Uh, timeout called by Seton Hall. Anthony Bozella really irate with his team after that sequence. So, a couple of triples for Creighton. 
Take a three-point deficit to a three-point lead, and Coach Bozella, as you mentioned, John, we got a chance to talk to him at length before the game. Really an engaging personality. He you can is. see why he recruits so well, and he's recruited heavily from the transfer market, and they've gotten some real impact players to come in here and make a big difference this year. Well, and, you know, we talked with him about that and, and just the chemistry challenges that that presents, and he said, absolutely it is. It, it, it's tough to bring in new players, upperclassmen, and try to get them to fit in. But he also said that this group this year has been one of his favorites because they've really meshed together. They've let the freshmen, you know, sort of join the family, so to speak. And, and you know, two of the transfers who are, are frontline starters have, have just really fit in well with the culture and the community. So yeah, it, it's working out for Seton Hall, getting some of those transfers. And, you know, he also said that we're not the show in town at Seton Hall. You know, there's so much going on. And, Take a look at your monitor. Here's a little bit of chippiness happening as we head into that timeout. Just a little. I'm still here. Hey, my elbows were just here. <laughs> right. Can't help that. That's Desiree Elmore. Uh, they are they are reviewing this apparently at the scorers table. This is this is one of those transfers. Desiree Elmore was transferred from Syracuse to Seton Hall. Well, we said at the top, it is that time of year. The intensity just ratchets up. In the middle of February, you can see yeah. that conference tournament coming in just a few weeks, and every possession means so much. Sometimes even between possessions, it means more than normal. Yeah, the, the patience from the other team is very low at this point in the season. You've seen about everything, all the, you know, the little nips and pushes and tugs and, and things they start to just build up over the course of the season and got to be careful that it doesn't boil over you see our officials Ashley Gilpin Norma Jones and Chris Sauceda they apparently did not assess any further infraction after that review might have just told Anthony Mazzella to hey have a have a chat with Desiree Elmore because that's a, that's borderline yeah. So, break with a three-point lead and the ball. Jalen Agnew is now in double figures with 10. Still has two fouls, remember. Rachel Saunders driving in. Got herself to the rim. Couldn't bank it home after she did the hard part. It's Seton Hall basketball. Park Lane, whipping it to Feeney Funis. First time we've seen her today. Funis takes the mid-range. Looked like she was going to find the rebound, but the Jays able to scramble it clear. And Rembau pushes the pace. Seton Hall get back so well in transition. And Agnew, foul called, count the tray, and put her on the line for a potential four-point play. Well, the foul is going to be called not against the player who was trying to guard the shooter. It's fighting through the screen. You'll see it right here. Saunders is setting the screen, and it's Shadeen Samuels who hooks Saunders trying to get through. They said the basket was good initially, but we'll find out. It can only be good if the shot was in the air while the foul occurred away from the ball. We're going to talk about this. No basket. Can get an explanation. Looked like they were waving the basket off. They just told us they're going to review and confirm who the foul was on. It should be on Samuels. That would be her second, if so. Seton Hall have gone on a three-minute scoring drought. Creighton, if this basket stands, it'd be a 9-0 run. It's 24, Samuels. Should be a pretty easy review. Question is, do you count the basket? That's really borderline as to whether that foul occurred when the shot had left her hand or not. You see that referee in the foreground, and Chris Sauceda indicating to count it. Well, they, they were not, they said they weren't they didn't say that they were reviewing basket good or not, but 
They must have waved it off now. Okay, so the basket does count, we're being told. It's not a free throw. Yeah, and the Jays get the ball. All right, so chance for a five or six point possession here for Creighton. They've taken a game high six point lead and Agnew wants more, but maybe force that one. She's a player that sometimes you don't mind forcing a no. shot, but that was not her best look. Most often you let her shoot as many times as she wants. Ah, plus one at the other end for Seton Hall. They needed that. Beamy Funis providing a spark off the bench, ending Creighton's 9 nothing run. Funis only plays about eight minutes a game, but putting in some good work here. For an and one. And she converts. A big moment there, just as Creighton had a chance to create some daylight here before the half. Yeah, made bucket off that foul would have been huge. So Seton Hall already eight free throws made. Creighton has only shot one. And there's the cut to the rim, but around and out for Temi Sarda. The pass might have come just a little late. As Sarda had drifted underneath the rim, had to wait for herself to clear before taking the shot. Warren Park Lane, just like that, ties the game at 30. A quick six for Seton Hall to answer back. Just a 27% three-point shooter on the season, but you leave her open like that, she's eventually going to get one. Agnew cut off. Three ball. Saunders! What an end of this first half. Now both teams who were pretty ugly shooting the basketball in the first period really come on here in the second. It's been much more pleasing to the eye. Three-second differential, game and shot clock. It goes Funis to the rim, bumping and scoring. And she just muscled past Michael Parham. Final seconds of the half, shot clock is off. Big collision at center. Who's this foul against? They call that on Jackson. And she looks like she got the worst of that. Yeah, she never saw that screen coming from Parham. Jackson took a hard fall. He's going to be called for running through the screen, but that's a blindsider right there. There's a good screen from Parham. She held her ground. Well established, as you saw. And unfortunately, Jackson never saw her. She's just fine. That could have been worse. Looked like three seconds left. Tatum Rembau hangs. Foul called. Eight tenths of a second on the clock. Free throws coming for Tatum Rembau. That's one that'll drive the coach absolutely batty. <laughs> you can commit the foul with the player trying to make a runner under a second to play in the half. Ooh. Rembau can't convert the first. Second free throw good. And they won't get a shot off at the buzzer. That's the end of the first half. Very competitive opening 20 minutes as we expected. Creighton, after a back and forth battle over 20, has a two point lead. The Jays 34 and the Pirates of Seton Hall 32. Be back at halftime in a moment from Sokol Arena. What can great minds do? While at Seton Hall, I interned with the Superior Court of New Jersey, and that inspired me to go to law school. 
I am a physics and civil engineering major, and I want to work on infrastructure in underdeveloped countries. I'm the news director at one of the top college radio stations in the country. I'm working with my professor on research that could help athletes during sudden cardiac events. I started my own business, Classic Soccer Cleats, and I just sold it to a company in England. Come see for yourself what great minds can do. Here at halftime at Sokol Arena, the Butler Bulldogs started 2020 with a 9-1 conference record. And even though they slid back to 9-4, they're still in third place in the Big East standings. And earlier this week on Fast Break, Megan Caffrey caught up with Kristen Spolier and Umu Torre to hear what has been working for the dogs. Butler Bulldogs went 2-0 this weekend, moving into sole possession of second place in Big East standings at 9-3 in conference play, as I'm now joined by guards senior Kristen Spolier and freshman Umu Torre. Since the start of 2020, your team has won eight of your last nine, including a five-game win streak. What has your team been doing so well together during this stretch? I just think that like after our two losses that we took right before the end of the year, we sat there and we had a meeting so we could reevaluate ourselves and the team. This is coming from like the coaches all the way down to the players, uh, coming from the starters to the bench people, just everyone, our entire staff. We had to sit there and just be like, what do we need to do to get better? So then after we had that meeting, we went on and had good practices and then that's led us to what our record is now. Kristen, you scored 25 points in your team's win over Villanova. However, in the game prior to that, you scored nine points. You did say after win on Sunday that that's the key to this team, that you don't have to do it all every night. What is this team's offense able to do that allows everyone to get production? Um, well, I think it's just a, I guess it's key that everybody on our team has the ability to score whether you see that on any given night or not they do and that's all the way from all of our starters to our bench everybody can score the basketball and I think our offense allows everybody to um, be in position to take um, good shots and like I said I don't have to do it all and that's really key for us to win is that we're going to have four people in double uh, digit scoring and that's really what I think has led to some of our success. Umu, as a freshman, you're in the top five in scoring on your team. At what point this season have you really felt your confidence come on? I feel like after the first few games, I was a little nervous because it was my it's a new experience playing college ball, and like I've just watched my sisters play. But like I just got comfortable with everybody, with everything. Kristen, as a senior on this team, how have you taken Umu under your wing a little bit to help her grow her confidence? I think I really just um, expressed like how much like confidence we all have in her and that we really need her uh, to be successful on this team. And so I think that after she's like, you know, learned some of the plays and stuff, she's got more comfortable with everybody and um, in the plays. And so I think that is just really has led to her confidence and her ability to show everybody what she is capable of. And we all knew that she had it. And I just want to, you know, be more of like a mentor and uh, a positive leader. So that's just really what I've tried to be this year. Your team has the best scoring defense in the league, at allowing 58.7 points per game. What is this team able to do so well defensively to limit your opponent's shots? I mean, we just get up and we really uh, scramble for the ball and we're really aggressive and that just goes back to practice. We always, uh, half of our practice is always defense and so we're always working on that and um, just having the mindset that we're going to lock people down defensively and we're going to stick to our principles and hoping that will translate to offense. You guys are going to be on the road this weekend, so what is something that you take onto the road that you're going to be doing? Mm, I don't know if I really have any free game rituals. <laughs> Is there a certain song that you like to listen pregame? Uh, I have a pregame playlist, so I mean, I guess it's a little bit of a ritual. But like, other than that, I mean, normally like French toast, some like strawberries in the morning. <laughs> but other than that, not really. Don't have a. How about you, Kristen? You know, I don't really have one either. Usually on the road, uh, we'll get to breakfast. We'll watch a little bit of film. 
and then I'll go back and lay down for a little bit, uh, watch TV or whatever that may be, and then get ready to go to the gym. The keys to success. <laughs> Kristen and Umu, thank you so much for joining me. Best of luck this weekend. Thank you. What can great minds do? While at Seton Hall, I interned with the Superior Court of New Jersey, and that inspired me to go to law school. I am a physics and civil engineering major, and I want to work on infrastructure in underdeveloped countries. I'm the news director at one of the top college radio stations in the country. I'm working with my professor on research that could help athletes during sudden cardiac events. I started my own business, Classic Soccer Cleats, and I just sold it to a company in England. Come see for yourself what great minds can do. What? Stand up, stand up stronger. I got the power, gonna raise it up. So high, we're shining brighter. We got the power, gonna raise it up. We got the power, gonna raise it up. You're watching Creighton Basketball on the Big East Digital Network. Big East Fast Break is the weekly women's basketball show hosted by Megan Caffrey and Ashley Leotis, breaking down everything in Big East women's hoops. You can catch all new episodes of Fast Break during the season every Wednesday at 3.30 p.m. on the Big East Twitter and YouTube pages. And with Valentine's Day this week, Megan and Ashley spread some love across the Big East. We decided to spread the love for Valentine's Day that's coming up. We looked around the league, and here are some of the Valentines that we have. My first one is going to go to the Seton Hall freshman guards, Lauren Park Lane and Maya Jackson. Lauren starts for the Pirates, and she is just this little engine that goes. She provides such a spark. And then Maya Jackson, she leads the team in three-pointers. And what's more, she really hits triples when it matters. She had three three-pointers in the Pirates game against DePaul. And then I think you go all the way back to UConn. She had five three-pointers in this game. Little girl, big time shots. And my first pick spreading the love around the league. I'm going to go with Shantae Soma. We heard from her earlier uh, in the show, but I was with her for both games this weekend as they made their way into New York. And on Friday, or on Sunday rather, she had a career high of 29 points. A double-double with 10 rebounds as well. And she's just been lights out. She had 24 points in the first half alone. Really helped her team on Friday as well make that win, that big push for the win against St. John. And I was actually talking to her a little bit off camera on Sunday and uh, just about some of her career highs. And even her sports information director said, oh, yeah, that was a career high. That was a career high. That was a career high. All of these <laughs> taking place on Sunday. So lots of love going out to her because she had a lights out performance this weekend. Although the Providence Friars record doesn't show it, this Friars team has a fight in them. You looked at their game most recently against Creighton. They were down just five at the half. Then into the third quarter, they cut their deficit from double digits to single digits. This Friars team, they are young, but they have a fight in them. Their last five games, here's a nugget for how young they are. In the Friars' last five games, their starting lineup has been all underclassmen. They are young, they have a fight in them, and they are showing that. And finally, spreading the love around the league, we got to end with some puppy love. Oh, yeah, I am talking about Butler Blue the fourth. We saw him a little bit on camera. He got some screen time uh, earlier this weekend. I think we have a little bit of that video to share with you. There he is. Are you kidding me? Look at that face. Oh, my gosh. He is so precious. <laughs> 
he is just so cute, Megan. Uh, like I said, he is in the um, training right now. So if you mm -hmm. go on some of his social media, he is in puppy love, or puppy training. Actually, they're going to be passing the collar to him, Butler the Third passing mm -hmm. the collar to him. That's happening at Hinkle Fieldhouse on February 29th. They're asking everyone to wear white in support of passing the collar. But Butler the Third, we thank you for all of your hard mm -hmm. work. And Butler the Fourth, almost out of puppy school, I think. Mm -hmm. And He's ready to go. He looks well trained. He looked like it there. I don't think I've ever been more jealous before in my life than when I was watching John Fanta and Kim Adams, who were on the call for Butler's game on Sunday, with the selfies that they had I with know. the puppy. I was just like, I wish I was there right now. I would have just let him lay in my lap and call the game. That's it. That's all, that's all you need. Treat, feeding treats all throughout the game. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> all right, we've got to be all in. All in. All right. We've got to make sure we play with great passion. You have felt each other and helped each other and allowed yourselves to be helped with that. All right? We've got a great opportunity to do that today. This is who we are. When you look to your left and you see your sister over there, you help. Because what we are, we are one. Let's break it. One, two, three. Yeah. That's the Big East way. The 2020 Big East Women's Basketball Tournament at Wintrust Arena. Get tickets now. Every time you show up, every time you make your loyalties clear, whether you're here for the memories that last a lifetime or the dance that happens just once a year, whether you ride for the Cinderella or go all in for the legendary comeback, however you choose to be a fan, you make the game and they make history. March 20th and 22nd in Omaha, Nebraska. Nothing beats the crowd. Visit NCAA.com slash MBB tickets to get your seats today. What can great minds do? While at Seton Hall, I interned with the Superior Court of New Jersey, and that inspired me to go to law school. I am a physics and civil engineering major, and I want to work on infrastructure in underdeveloped countries. I'm the news director at one of the top college radio stations in the country. I'm working with my professor on research that could help athletes during sudden cardiac events. I started my own business, Classic Soccer Cleats, and I just sold it to a company in England. Come see for yourself what great minds can do. Time here in Omaha, 34-32 lead for the Creighton Blue Jays at the break. He's John Schreiner. I'm Donnie Barnes. Let's look at some quick highlights from those opening 20 minutes of play. As uh, it was a little choppy to start, John. Both teams took a long time to find their rhythm, but early on, the offensive rebounding was a big story for Seton Hall. Yeah, it certainly was. They were all over the offensive glass, and it was a big benefit to Maya Jackson. 12 first half points. She was three of four from beyond the arc, leading the way in most statistical categories for Seton Hall. She also led the way with five rebounds. The guard off the bench doing work in the first half for the Pirates. Yeah, she's a big reason why the Seton Hall bench outscored Creighton 17-6. But Jalen Agnew, she led all scorers with 13 in the opening half. Yeah, and we saw Jalen off to a little bit of a slow start today too. But boy, when she gets it going, she's just so good. In rhythm three right here. Look at that, just pure. Agnew. Her supporting cast is really helping her out, getting her the ball in good spots. Agnew picked up her second foul early in the second quarter, but was able to stay foul free the rest of the half. Our halftime stats, Creighton shooting 50%, Seton Hall just 33, but that's where the offensive rebounding gave Seton Hall a lot of second chances. Yeah, everything else being equal, I mean, Creighton should be ahead by maybe eight, 10 points, but the offensive boards for Seton Hall have really cut down the number of chances that Creighton might have had to get out of transition or just rebound the ball and start something back the other way. And it's given them 
a chance with some good second chance opportunities. Ten second chance points in the first half for Seton Hall. Second half begins with Creighton possessing the basketball in the white, Seton Hall in the blue. Tracy Griglione thought about the quick three. Agnew and Griglione to the rim, but couldn't finish. Got the own rebound and finished the second time. Yeah, it's a good little give and go there from Griglione. You'd like to see her finish it on the first chance, but done a good job of recovering after the miss. It was just the second offensive rebound of the game for Creighton. They led by as many as six late in the first half. That saw nine ties and six lead changes. And here is Park Lane short on the three. Easy rebound for Greg Leon. And Park Lane was the only other Pirate to make a three-pointer in that first half. We were four for 11. But outside of Maya Jackson, the team was one for seven. Greg Leon misses from three. She's been really active to start the second half. Started every game, Gracie Griglione, only averaging two points per game. The scoop won't go, and the rebound finds its way into Rimbaugh's hands. That was another opportunity for an offensive rebound for Seton Hall right there. And in transition, Rachel Saunders. Just a little bit long. Johnson pushes the floor for Seton Hall and pulls up and scores. Barbara Johnson, that Ole Miss transfer, averaging nine a game. And she's been around. Out of Toronto, went to Chippewa College, then to Ole Miss, and now to Seton Hall. That's quite a journey. Chippewa College is in Florida. Agnew guarded by Samuels and nails the three right over. She's just a tough player. I mean, what, what else can you say about Jalen Agnew? She's going to make shots. 16 points now for Agnew today. Lauren Park Lane, nice crossover, but Agnew towering over her, forced her to push the ball out. Bit of an awkward possession for Seton Hall, but Elmore couldn't make something happen at the end of it. And Elmore wanted the foul call right there, didn't get it. Might have had a case. An open three for Gracie Greg Leone. She has five points early in the second half, and the Jays have their largest lead of the day. Yeah, she's just a 22% shooter from outside, Gracie Greg Leone. Got that one to fall. Six-nothing run for Creighton in the last minute. Two-point lead out to eight. Lauren Park Lane in the lane. And Seton Hall. Could use Samuels going on a little run of her own. Elmore instead from the baseline sinks a tough jumper. That's pretty from Elmore right there. Turn baseline and just shoot over top of your defender. And that'll get something going for the Pirates. A quick timeout after that made bucket. We'll take a break. With 6.46 to go in the third quarter. Six point lead for Creighton. All right, we gotta be all in, all in, all right? But we gotta make sure we play with great passion. You have felt each other and helped each other and allowed yourselves to be helped with that, all right? We've got a great opportunity to do that today. This is who we are. When you look to your left and you see your sister over there, you help her. Because what we are, we are one. Let's break it. One, two, three. Yeah. That's the Big East way. The 2020 Big East Women's Basketball Tournament at Wintrust Arena. Get tickets now. Every time you show up, every time you make your loyalties clear, whether you're here for the memories that last a lifetime or the dance that happens just once a year, whether you ride for the Cinderella or go all in for the legendary comeback, however you choose to be a fan, you make the game. 
and they make history. March 20th and 22nd in Omaha, Nebraska. Nothing beats the crowd. Visit NCAA.com slash MVB tickets to get your seats today. What can great minds do? While at Seton Hall, I interned with the Superior Court of New Jersey, and that inspired me to go to law school. I am a physics and civil engineering major, and I want to work on infrastructure in underdeveloped countries. I'm the news director at one of the top college radio stations in the country. I'm working with my professor on research that could help athletes during sudden cardiac events. I started my own business, Classic Soccer Cleats, and I just sold it to a company in England. Come see for yourself what great minds can do. Six to go in the third quarter in Omaha. Backcourt pressure by Seton Hall. Going to disrupt this Creighton offense and out of bounds to the Jays, but that's what the Pirates wanted. Great, some awkwardness for Creighton, who started this third quarter hot. I'm surprised it's taken this long for Seton Hall to go to it. Creighton sometimes can struggle with a little bit of backcourt pressure. Seton Hall trying to create something now as they trail by six. Both teams had seven turnovers in the first half. And Seton Hall average about 19 turnovers forced a game. Jay's able to break to the front court, and a foul called. And Maya Jackson as Tatum Rimbo went to the rim. That's the third on Maya Jackson, who again led them with 12 points off the bench in the first half. Jackson gets in foul trouble. Somebody else is going to have to pick up the scoring. She's been the one that's kept them in this game, really. I mean, like we said, without Jackson's 12 off the bench and those three three-pointers that she made in the first half, this is probably an 8-10 to 10 point game at the break. And it's an 8-point game now as Rembau hits them both, and she has 9 points today. Matches Creighton's largest lead of the game. Shadeen Samuels has just two points today. And leading scorer. Pretty quiet afternoon for her. They're going to need to get her going, you suspect, if Seton Hall are going to come back in this second half. She has the ball now. And Lauren Park Lane down the middle of the lane. What a drive from the freshman. Four-time All-State in high school, and maybe just as impressively, John, five-time All-Conference in high school. <laughs> well. <laughs> and there's an over and back violation on Creighton, and suddenly a bit of momentum for the Pirates. And Park Lane's just so quick. I mean, you get a bigger defender on her, and there's just no chance that they're going to stay with. And right now, she's matched up with Carly Batchelor. It's a height mismatch for sure, but Park Lane gets the ball. She's going to outrun Batchelor to the rim every single time. Ball called against Creighton here on the floor. How about that smooth little behind-the-back dribble from Park Lane on that last drive? She did it so quickly, you almost didn't notice at full speed. Made that looks so easy. Trying to inbound under the rim to Samuels. Lewis chases down the ball. Park Lane in the post. Lewis. Foul called on the Jays again. And that's the third, I believe. Now they call that on Carly Batchelor. Oh, that's a break. We thought that was going to be the third on uh, Jalen Agnew. Agnew thought it was going to be on her, too. Yeah. And Batchelor able to tip the inbound, and it's stolen by Rembaugh. Quickly, the Jays pop the corner three, but Sarda misses. The board, though, by Saunders. Creighton can recycle. Almost stolen up top by Lewis. Frantic sequence, Sarda. And the rebound taps to Jackson. Almost another offensive rebound for Rachel Saunders. 
A tough post entry pass, but it finds Shadeen Samuels for just her second bucket of the day. Uh, they created a mismatch, Seton Hall did, by getting Samuels on Temi Sarda. Sarda's a lot smaller than Samuels. And while Sarda was trying to front the post, the lob inside, just no chance to stop it. Just break the pressure. A 4 0 run by the Pirates to get within four. Rembau draws another foul and will go back to the line for two more. That's a savvy move right there by Rembau. She sees that she can create some contact, gets it, gets the body in, puts the shot up. Even if it doesn't go, she's going to get two free throws, and that's what we'll have as we come back from the break. Which we'll do in just a moment. Four-point lead for Creighton with free throws coming. All right, we got to be all in. All in, all right? We got to make sure we play with great passion. You have felt each other and helped each other and allowed yourselves to be helped with that. All right? We've got a great opportunity to do that today. This is who we are. When you look to your left and you see your sister over there, you help her. Because what we are, we are one. Let's break it. One, two, three. Yeah! That's the Big East way. The 2020 Big East Women's Basketball Tournament at Wintrust Arena. Get tickets now. The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. I felt like I was going to spend my whole adult life paying this off. Thanks to SoFi, I can see the light at the end of the tunnel. As of 12 p.m. today, I am debt free. We have no debt, we don't owe anybody anything, and it's fantastic. can great minds do? While at Seton Hall, I interned with the Superior Court of New Jersey, and that inspired me to go to law school. I am a physics and civil engineering major, and I want to work on infrastructure in underdeveloped countries. I'm the news director at one of the top college radio stations in the country. I'm working with my professor on research that could help athletes during sudden cardiac events. I started my own business, Classic Soccer Cleats, and I just sold it to a company in England. Come see for yourself what great minds can do. 44-40, Creighton, a little 4-0 run by Seton Hall going into that timeout. The free throws coming for Creighton's Tatum Rembaus. Quietly putting together a solid game for Omaha. She's only taken two field goals. She's made them both. She has nine points with these two free throws pending, and now she's into double figures. Yeah, both of those field goals were three-pointers as well. <laughs> Very efficient day so far for Tatum Rembaus. She's hit four of five from the line. Make it five of six. Back to six. This Creighton lead. 11 points now for Rembo. Second Blue Jay into double figures. You said it, quiet but efficient. Lob to Shadeen Samuels. Wouldn't go. Had the rebound for a moment, then lost it. Creighton ball. Saunders. Front court to Sarda. Jays want to slow it down a bit. And Seton Hall really needs a stop right here. They had the game down to four after trailing by eight. Rembo with it again. It's the screen from Batchelor. Tried to slip it to Batchelor, intercepted. Maya Jackson. And quick hands by Jackson. Got that bounce pass, trying to go between defenders. Jackson way too quick for it. Samuels, tough pass for Lauren Park Lane. 
Now Femi Funis left open, top of the key, makes them pay. 18-footer for Funis. Well, she's got that kind of range. Doesn't have a three-pointer made on the season. Bachelor Agnew waits and scores. Great hesitation, great patience from Agnew. Didn't panic when she got down underneath, just waiting for the defense to clear. Made it an easy finish. Clark Lane forced her way under. Renbau did enough. Smith chases down the loose ball. And Jackson, at this time, had 12 points in the first half. It's scoreless in the third quarter. Jays still lead by six. Just not enough paint touches for Seton Hall on the offensive end. Timmy Sarda splashes a three. And then the largest lead for Creighton swells to nine. Yeah, too many open looks here in this second half for the Blue Jays. Seton Hall's got to tighten up on the perimeter. They've got to get the ball inside. Well, they did briefly to Samuels, who was then fouled. I think only good things are going to happen when they get the ball inside. I mean, either you're going to get to Samuels and she's going to make something happen, or she's going to get to the free throw line. Neither of those are bad. And you said early on, Anthony Bozella told us before the game, I had to get the ball into the paint. And just not been able to do it very much. With a touch foul called against the Jays, though. That's Rembau this time. And that's the fourth of the quarter on Creighton. And so they're out of fouls for the last 213 of this frame. Uh, the Blue Jay defenders are, in general, smaller than their players they're guarding. Samuels muscles it through. Just six points for her, but a couple buckets in the last couple minutes. And she struggled with knee problems throughout the year. Sometimes the second games of weekends as Agnew misses. Loose ball found by the Pirates, and they have it down seven. Sometimes these second games, though, of a weekend can be a little tougher on Shadeen Samuels with those knee problems. She's looked a little off the pace today, but her team's still in it. That's not a pretty shot. Loose ball forces a tie-up. Crowd yelling that Femi Funis kicked somebody there. Just the tie-up called for now. The arrow belongs to Seton Hall. Officials discussing, and now they're going to go to the replay, looks like. Now let's, let's see, see the replay can, first. Yeah, if we can see anything that happened. There's a tie-up. Ooh. Ooh, that didn't look very nice. Just the heat of a moment type situation, trying to pull the ball away, puts her foot on the chest. Well, I think it was Tatum Rembao to push her away. And that's looking like it's probably going to be a technical foul. Just told that they're looking for, and this is a direct quote from the official, looking for any extracurricular activity on that last play. I think there is something there. Now, what they're going to call it, I don't know. If it's a flagrant one, it's Creighton. Creighton gets two free throws in the basketball. If it's a two, Funis will be heading to the locker room. I don't know. It's, a, it's, it's right on the line between the two. And it's one of those, isn't it, John, where it looks even worse in slow motion. It looks worse in slow motion, sure. speed so the referee uh, the officials didn't really see a lot I don't think you can say it's nothing no and, and when you slow it down like that it certainly magnifies it three heads nodding out there at the center court stripe so it looks like they're all in agreement of what it is Get a, an explanation again Intentional foul being called on Femi Funis. Two shots for Creighton, and they'll have the ball. 
Yeah, and, and again, it, you can't watch the video and say, well, it's just nothing. <laughs> yeah, that, not, that wasn't not what you saw. Context, no. no. And, and, you know, Funis is probably not thinking about what she's actually doing right there. It's just, I'm trying to rip the ball away. My, my foot's up in the air. I push off. I, I, it's not an intentional kick, I don't think. You see, it's just a push off. Just trying to rip the ball out, putting her foot wherever it might be. But wherever it might be happens to be on the chest of Tatum Rimbao. And it's maybe another symptom of the time of year. We talked about yeah. the intensity and the chippiness in the middle of February. Every game mattering so much. Where are you going to end up in those conference seedings for the conference tournament? Jalen Agnew makes the first of two. Yeah, and that's the situation for Creighton. You get to pick who you want to shoot them. And here's the nation's leader in free throw percentage. And she stays that way. And she's up to 20 points for the day. Nine point lead for Creighton matches their largest, and they have the ball with a chance to push that into double digits. Again, on that play, I don't think there's a lot of malice intended with Funis. It's just. You just can't do that. You just can't do it. Corner three, Saunders left it short. Yeah, Creighton really trying to put a dagger in here at the end of the third quarter with a three. The shot from Saunders came up a little bit short, but I don't mind it. And you go up 12, it's a different feeling. Deflected ball, finds Park Lane. Couldn't hit an open three. And then Sarda misses short. Couple chances for the Jays to really make this a tough fourth quarter comeback for Seton Hall. They haven't capitalized, so the lead is still nine. 40 to go in the third quarter. Again, it, it's post touches for Shadeen Samuels, I think is the recipe here for Seton Hall. Instead, the three by Jasmine Smith. They left her open. She sinks it, and it's back to six. Jasmine Smith, just nine of 45 from three-point range coming into this game. Her 10th triple of the season, and that's a big one here at the end of the third. Shot clock is off. Rimbo dribble, dribbling clock. And now Sarda with four. And then Agnew. An air ball. And that'll do it for quarter three. So Seton Hall, after falling behind nine, they hung around in those last couple of minutes. Got a few stops, hit a three, and it's just a six-point game headed to the final frame in Omaha. 53-47 Creighton. Quarter number four coming next. Every time you show up, every time you make your loyalties clear, whether you're here for the memories that last a lifetime or the dance that happens just once a year, whether you ride for the Cinderella or go all in for the legendary comeback, however you choose to be a fan, you make the game and they make history. March 20th and 22nd in Omaha, Nebraska. Nothing beats the crowd. Visit NCAA.com slash MBB tickets to get your seats today. What can great minds do? While at Seton Hall, I interned with the Superior Court of New Jersey, and that inspired me to go to law school. I am a physics and civil engineering major, and I want to work on infrastructure in underdeveloped countries. I'm the news director at one of the top college radio stations in the country. I'm working with my professor on research that could help athletes during sudden cardiac events. I started my own business, Classic Soccer Cleats, and I just sold it to a company in England. Come see for yourself what great minds can do. is who we are. When you look to your left and you see your sister over there, you help her. Because what we are, we are one. Let's break it. One, two, three. Yeah. That's the Big East way. 
the 2020 Big East Women's Basketball Tournament at Wintrust Arena. Get tickets now. Good atmosphere inside Sokol Arena today. Ten big minutes to go. Creighton by six. Led by as many as nine a couple times. Haven't been able to put Seton Hall away. And the Pirates start the fourth quarter with the ball. A little bigger lineup out there. Try to go to Shadeen Samuels, and it's off her hand last. Creighton ball. Just trying to establish something underneath, but... The active hands for Creighton through that third quarter and here to start the fourth. Really denied a lot of what Seton Hall wants to do inside. Samuels has looked tired today. Again, understandable with the knee issue she's had. Temi Sarda from straight on is dead on. Pushes it back to nine for Creighton and it's go time now for Seton Hall. And they look to answer right back, can't do so. Off target from Jasmine Smith. Agnew pulled in the board. Another chance for Creighton to get the lead to double figures. Rembau almost into a triple team. Around the horn, Sarda again, foul called. In and out, the foul was slightly off the ball. Carly Batchelor was tangled up. It's another one on Samuels for pushing through the screen. Sarget called for this earlier. And there it is. So that's on the floor. It's number three on Samuels. See Barbara Johnson taking a seat. Creighton still up nine with the ball. This is where the Jays' ability to milk clock in their half-court offense can help them. Saunders. Rembau, shot clock running down. The three just off the mark. Offensive board, and it falls to Sarda eventually. Wow. Offensive rebound after 30 seconds of hard defense for Seton Hall. That's a It'll get you down in the dauber a little bit. Shot clock running down again. Sarda. And another missed chance for the Jays to really push this lead out. 60 seconds came off the clock while Creighton had the basketball. Samuels able to catch cleanly in the post this time. Draws the double team and draws the foul. I mean, you can count on one hand the number of successful post-entry passes the Pirates have had to Shadeen Samuels today. Yeah, it hasn't been too many. But you see, when she gets it down there, she's doing work. She can get it done. Doesn't finish the play right there, but she's at the free throw line. The chance to score with the clock stopped. When you're trailing by nine, any, anything you can do with the clock stopped is a major benefit. Samuels trims the lead to seven. We get a stoppage on the inbound. Oh, yeah. There was a clock issue there. Yeah, the shot clock had started, and in two seconds had come off the shot clock. Now the game clock's been reset to 75.2 seconds here in the arena. That's, that's odd. That's not correct. It should be 7.52, I believe. There you go. <laughs> there we go. Not 75.2. <laughs> Slight difference. So that's all been fixed. Though Creighton would like to just take it down to 75.2. Yeah, that'd suit them just fine. Able to break that backcourt press. Tough runner for Rembau. Jays get a fortunate bounce. And what do we have here? Well, the shot clock reset to 30 instead of to 20, and Anthony Bozella really hot with the scorer's table. 
And uh, Ashley Gilpin had to warn him. That's a foul on the scorer's table, right? Still got to reset the, there you go, 16. Yeah, remember, that's a new rule this year. On an offensive rebound, shot clock resets to 20 instead of 30. So here we go again. Seven point Creighton lead. They're able to trap Saunders on the baseline for a moment, and then they steal the ball. Seton Hall haven't forced as many turnovers as they usually do today. And you're playing a team that doesn't turn it over very often. Now. And they're back within five. Great drive and scoop by Maya Jackson. Her first points of the second half. And this time, the shot clock reset to 20. So, they have to stop play again. Scorer's table having a rough time over there. And you see Glenn Sisk, Mr. Do-It-All. You wonder if the clock's gotten stuck in a mode where it's resetting to Only the long thing. Only resetting to the, yeah. the 20 seconds. Because these are officials that usually run the game and shot clock pretty flawlessly here at Sokol, so something must be scrambled there with the technology. So it should be 56-51. Jays have made a substitution as Harley Batchelor checks out. Scoreboard now has been updated with the proper score and 29 seconds on the shot clock, so should be set to play again. But it was a nine-point Creighton lead. Several chances to push it to 11 or 12, yeah. too. Oh, I think we'll feel they've not played that well today, but very much in this game. Still seven minutes plus to go. And almost another turnover, but the Jays survived that little onslaught. Backcourt pressure for Seton Hall is really turning up now. Jalen Agnew, 20 points today. Tatum Rembau. Back to Agnew, takes the quick three. Way short. Foul underneath. That's going against Seton Hall. That's a huge call. And their bench is livid. Anthony Bozella was going berserk after that decision. He gets into it, doesn't he? <laughs> He's an intense coach. Inbounded under the rim, poked out of bounds. Creighton keep it. And this has been a choppy last few minutes. We've only had about 30 seconds run off the game clock. Quick inbound and a shot blocked. As Sarda had that rejected crowd hollering for a foul. Uh, that was clean from Lewis. She got the ball. And Jackson touched out to Smith. Chance for Seton Hall to make this a one possession game. Smith pivots. Can't get it to go. Big rebound in traffic by Gracie Griglione, who's fouled. See who they get. And it's Lewis called for the foul. Take a look at the replay. Tough call. I think he could have called it on Samuels as well. Probably more so than Lewis. Agnew breaking that trap by herself. Greg Leon buries another three. In the second half, every time Seton Hall has threatened to get back into this game, Creighton just comes up with a clutch three-pointer that draws it back. Gracie Griglione averaging two points a game coming in. He has eight big ones in the second half. But there's an answer from Maya Jackson. Back to six. That's Griglione again. Jays. Calls, calms things down. Sorry, Donnie, they'll be very patient on offense now. Until the three from Tatum Rambo. Back to back trays for Creighton. Timeout Seton Hall as the Jays push the lead back to nine. What was it Anthony Bazella told us at the pregame 
table. He said, we cannot give them open looks. Just can't give them open looks, and there have been too many, especially here in the second half for the Blue Jays. Creighton shooting well over 40% from three. We'll take a break with the Jays up 62 to 53. What can great minds do? While at Seton Hall, I interned with the Superior Court of New Jersey, and that inspired me to go to law school. I am a physics and civil engineering major, and I want to work on infrastructure in underdeveloped countries. I'm the news director at one of the top college radio stations in the country. I'm working with my professor on research that could help athletes during sudden cardiac events. I started my own business, Classic Soccer Cleats, and I just sold it to a company in England. Come see for yourself what great minds can do. The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. I felt like I was going to spend my whole adult life paying this off. Thanks to SoFi, I can see the light at the end of the tunnel. As of 12 p.m. today, I am debt free. We have no debt, we don't owe anybody anything, and it's fantastic. All right, we gotta be all in, all in, all right? But we gotta make sure we play with great passion. You have felt each other and helped each other and allowed yourselves to be helped with that, all right? We've got a great opportunity to do that today. This is who we are. When you look to your left and you see your sister over there, you help. Because what we are, we are one. Let's break it. One, two, three. Yeah! That's the Big East way. The 2020 Big East Women's Basketball Tournament at Wintrust Arena. Get tickets now. Can great mind. It's been a tough afternoon for Shadeen Samuels so far. Seton Hall's leading scorer. She has eight, but she's not looked herself so far today. And her team trails by nine with just under five and a half minutes left. And Lewis off target on a three and then a foul on Seton Hall in the ensuing scramble. And again, we talked about Anthony Bozella, Seton Hall's head coach, telling us before the game if we take 20 or more threes today, it's not going to be a good sign. That's 17 attempts for them today, only five makes. And Samuels got the ball, but then afterwards ran into Sarda. And then Jalen Agnew splashes a three. And it's the largest lead of the day again for Creighton. It's 12 points for the Jays. And they are on the verge maybe of pulling away if Seton Hall can't find a bucket here. Lewis tries to provide it and does. Jasmine Smith actually from that left wing. So back to single digits with four and a half remaining. Casey Grigley on. Big second half points for her off the bench. Clock running down. Rembo's had Rembo's had 14 today. She's blocked and beating the buzzer and scoring again. Greg Leone. Did she get it off? They're going to check. Now look at this. It, it was very close. I wouldn't like to be the one who had to make the call in real time. Now let this stand. She has 10 now. Oh, it's out. Yeah. You can see the reflection of the red light in that glass backboard. 
Ball was well out of her hand before it turned red. What a finish. You're turning around. Huh. Almost, that's almost a no-look basket. And she does get her head up. But very little time to teardrop that away as the shot clock's running out. Practice it so many times. It has to happen instinctively in a moment like that, and it does. There's two off the career high for Greg Leone today with 10 points. If this is good, we think it will be. Career high came back on November 9th of 2018 at North Dakota State, and she scored 12. They officially count it. 67 56 Creighton. It's by far her season high. Scored five points against DePaul. In the first meeting between the Blue Jays and the Blue Demons. So it's getting late for Seton Hall. Shadeen Samuels got to find something here, and she finds a foul on Rachel Saunders. You can't discount the effort from Samuels today. She's been a warrior, still playing hard, both ends of the floor. She's drawn the tough assignment of guarding Jalen Agnew. See her right there, still putting her body on the line for the game. Time out taken by Creighton. So an 11 point lead for the Jays. We'll look at scores from around the Big East so far today in just a moment. The Jays have gradually been able to widen this lead throughout the second half. It was just a two point game at halftime from that today's game so far. Providence a one-point win over St. John's. Villanova 48-40 grinded out victory at Georgetown. Marquette up big on Butler early in the second half, or in the second quarter that is, and DePaul just one loss in conference on the season. That was to Creighton a couple weeks ago. They're up four on Xavier. And struggling with Xavier, who's currently at the bottom of the standings with only one league win. Thirty-second timeout. Eric's trying to cut that lead back to single digits. No more. Post pass stripped away by Agnew. And again, the Jays defending that post so well. This is how Creighton was winning games early on in the season. They were playing really good defense and shooting the ball very efficiently. That's, it's been the recipe today. Agnew, bam! And that's a dagger. Jalen Agnew, huge again for Creighton today. 26 points. Maya Jackson, cans one for Seton Hall. Keep them within touching distance. But Creighton in a strong position with 310 remaining. Uh, Jackson bordering on a 20 point performance here today, too. Got 19. Agnew resets. Wrigley on. Shot clock at five. And they travel. Three seconds, actually. Turned over by the Jays. 2.52 remaining. I don't think you would have been blamed for calling either one. Still a great second half effort by Gracie Griglione, who goes to the bench, replaced by Carly Batchelor. Robert Johnson out for Seton Hall. Warren Park Lane back at the point for them. So we haven't seen much of her lately. Samuels trying to create into the double team. The bounce wasn't there. The foul is. On Samuels. And for Shadeen Samuels. That is it. Her fifth. She six. And Creighton closing in on a big win. And it didn't quite go Samuels' way today. Preseason conference player of the year. She played tough. Played good defense throughout a lot of the first half. She's going to watch the final 236 from the bench. 
Jalen Agnew, again, the best foul shooter in the country. Her 27th point today. Going on 28. Yes, indeed. Seton Hall averages over 71 points a game, Donnie, and Creighton's done a nice job. They're under 60 right now with two and a half to go in the game. Jasmine Smith tipped out. Smith gets a second chance. Nice spin on the baseline. Elmore rattles it in. Yeah, no, no, that aggressiveness attacking the rim underneath just kind of went away for a large part of the second half. And Smith took a tough little tumble. Number three buried by Tatum Rembo as the Jays continue to kill the Pirates from beyond the arc. Lewis in and out. Tries again, scores this time. The lead still 12 for Creighton with less than two to go. Yeah, you're trading two for three in the wrong direction for Seton Hall. 14 made threes for the Blue Jays today. And Seton Hall electing not to foul here, so Creighton can take this clock down inside a minute and a half. And again, Tatum Rembo wide open. 15 threes for the Jays today. Rembo's got 20. Park Lane couldn't convert. Saunders the rebound, and Creighton are almost there. Hey. Literally shot 50% from beyond the arc today. Exactly. And that's why they're up 16 in the final minute. They call a timeout. Substitution timeout. Just going to get a line change here and chance for this Soko Arena crowd to rise and salute. Those five who have played so well today to give the Jays a much needed win after that tough loss Friday night. Agnew 28, Rembao 20, Sarda 12, and Griglione 10. Four players in double figures for the Blue Jays. This is D.D. Pryor just in the game. Michael Parham doesn't connect. the final possession of the day for the Pirates. Jasmine Smith splashes a triple. She's had a nice day. And it won't be enough this afternoon. Creighton can't run the clock all the way out. Three second differential. There's Chloe Dwarak back with the ball now. And the state championship it's at Lincoln Christian High School down the road. Peyton Brodsky hit a big three earlier in this game, back in the first half, and the Jays were kind of struggling to find their rhythm on the offensive end of the floor. Hey, you might point to that one as being a little bit of a spark for the offense for Kirk. A three from Brodsky in the first half. Pryor. Dwarak. Beat the shot clock, but well short. One more inbound coming for Seton Hall. As the Creighton Blue Jays take it this afternoon by a final of 78 to 66. And the Jays stay in those top six spots for a first round bye in the Big East tournament in a few weeks. They certainly have not secured that bye yet, but today will go a long way toward preserving that status. And for Seton Hall, they're still right on the edge. A game and a half up on Creighton for sixth coming in. Now it's just a half a game. Great second half performance by the Jays. Yeah, a really good shooting performance from Creighton and an impressive defensive performance holding a potent Seton Hall offense to five points below their season scoring average. This is the way Creighton needed to win. After they didn't play great defense against Seton Hall on Friday night, allowing 77 points to St. John's, this was a much better day for the Blue Jays. We hope to hear from Creighton head coach Jim Flannery when we come back with our post game after this 12 point Creighton win here on BEDN. Every time you show up, every time you make your loyalties clear, whether you're here for the memories that last a lifetime or the dance that happens just once a year, whether you ride for the Cinderella or go all in for the legendary comeback, however you choose to be a fan, 
you make the game, and they make history. March 20th and 22nd in Omaha, Nebraska. Nothing beats the crowd. Visit NCAA.com slash MBB tickets to get your seats. What can great minds do? While at Seton Hall, I interned with the Superior Court of New Jersey, and that inspired me to go to law school. I am a physics and civil engineering major, and I want to work on infrastructure in underdeveloped countries. I'm the news director at one of the top college radio stations in the country. I'm working with my professor on research that could help athletes during sudden cardiac events. I started my own business, Classic Soccer Cleats, and I just sold it to a company in England. Come see for yourself what great minds can do. is who we are. When you look to your left and you see your sister over there, you help. Because what we are, we are one. Let's break it. One, two, three. Yeah! That's the Big East way. The 2020 Big East Women's Basketball Tournament at Wintrust Arena. Get tickets now. Performance from the Creighton Blue Jays this afternoon and a 78-66 win over the Seton Hall Pirates here on BEDN. We're back here courtside one more time with John Schreiner. I'm Donnie Barnes, and we're joined by victorious head coach Jim Flannery today. And coach, a great second half performance in particular, and Jalen Agnew, 28 points, one of her best performances of the season, and she's had a lot of them. Yeah, yeah, it's good. I mean, she's coming off a game where she struggled to shoot it on Friday, and uh, uh, but she had 38 last weekend, so she's a She's a weekend, weekender, I guess. <laughs> but uh, yeah, she was she was really good. They played a lot of zone in the second half, which uh, you know I thought kind of fit us, to be honest. And then um, you know Tatum Rembaugh was huge. I thought you know just having her, um, and you're not going to necessarily shoot it the way she did today, um, but just having her court presence takes a lot off of Timmy and Jalen um, that we were asking them to do when she was gone, and so. Um, you know, the first time we played him, we didn't have, we didn't have Tatum, and I thought she was, she was really good. But uh, got a contribution. You know, Gracie Griglione. I mean, the the threes that she made uh, were huge, and and uh, really good, really good win. These these Seton Hall's a, a really good team. Uh, I thought, <laughs> I thought our post defense um, was significantly better than the first time we played them, and and because uh, they can, you know, they can hurt you with Samuels and Elmore and. And uh, I thought we really fought down there. Your defense in particular, I know it must have been frustrating giving up 77 on Friday night to St. John's. You come in against another potent offense, hold them to five below their season scoring average. Was there anything you changed up, anything you talked about between Friday and now? Well, we talked about just being more physical in the post and, and, and fronting some, especially just pu at least putting ourselves in a position to front where, where you know, so we didn't give up too deep a post-up position and we – um, I thought we did a good job of that. I thought we identified, you know, we did a good job on Lewis, who I think is a key to their team. She's shot the heck out of the ball and um, fairly recently. And uh, we didn't, now we didn't do as good a job on Jackson, number five. She really hurt us in the first <laughs> half. But, uh, <laughs> you know, there's always a trade off. But I thought uh, uh, just, uh, you know, maybe what, what happened the other night where we talked to him about just being, being better defensively. Because I think we, earlier in the year, we had been a, a very good defensive team, and I feel like we, we had slipped. We had told them that, and, you know, there's some reasons for that. I mean, our practice continuity hasn't been great, so when you can't practice the right way, it's hard to get better. But just challenging them, and, and I thought individually we did a good job defensively. 
We talked at the top of the broadcast about the importance of staying in the top six, getting that first round yeah. by. Do you guys talk about that a lot, or is it more <laughs> about just focusing on your performance on the I, day? I think about it a lot. Yeah. I don't. I don't talk about it a lot because I think they're aware of that. But uh, you know, the league is so good. I mean, there's you know the the six teams that really are kind of battling behind DePaul. Um, you know, that's that's kind of what we're <laughs> we're trying to get as far up that that ladder as we can and win games because right now we're still in really good shape at, for an at-large bid but uh, you know it's not just you know as, as I'm thinking it's not just about not losing to the teams that you shouldn't lose to it's you got to win some of the you know we got to beat some of these teams that we're in the scrum with and and we'd lost <coughs> you know to Marquette and and St. John's our last two against that against that group of six and uh, you know so we needed to we needed a win today, and now we got another one. Uh, you know, at Butler is is another huge game for us uh, on Friday. So it's it's good that we're that we're coming off a win because I think I feel like <laughs> to have two home games this weekend and not get either of them would have been um, per- slightly demoralizing <laughs> at, at the least. I could say. Right well, on. needed a win, got a win. Congratulations, coach. Thanks for thanks okay. for joining us. Thanks, you guys. Appreciate it. That is Creighton head coach Jim Flannery. You see our final stats today is Creighton. Uh, shot so well from the floor in the second half. They were actually 16 out of 33 from a three-point range for the game. And uh, both teams shot well from the free throw line. But again, Creighton, I think Coach said it, so strong defensively in the second half and able to shut Shadeen Samuels down just eight points for her today and just never were able to get the ball inside Seton Hall because of that great defense. Yeah, they, they really didn't have enough post touches, and that's what – Coach Bazella told us from the outset is they needed to get the ball inside. They couldn't settle for outside jumpers. They weren't going to win if they played that way. And, and, you know, his prediction came true. And for Creighton, I mean, you come in in a virtual tie for seventh place and maybe having to play for a first round by now you're a game and a half out of out of third place yeah. in the league standings. And, and as Jim said, playing for potentially an, an at-large berth here down the stretch. So just a massive win for the Blue Jays here at home. Indeed it was. We hope you enjoyed it here today. That's going to do it for our coverage from Omaha. Our executive producer today has been Joe Willman. We appreciate our entire crew who's done a great job. As always, for my broadcast partner, John Schreiner, I'm Donnie Barnes. 78-66, Creighton, your final score today. This has been Big East Women's Basketball on the Big East Digital Network. Good afternoon from Omaha, Nebraska.